Okay, today we're going to take a look at a Selpip speaking recording that someone sent me. Okay, actually, I'll, I'll show you his email here, okay? He says, Hi, Mark. Hope you're doing good. I watched your evaluation video on YouTube, and I want my speaking to be evaluated from you. As format requested, please find below the details. Desired score 9, past score 8. Uh, question. Your brother recently got his driver's license and wants to buy his first car. Give him some advice on how to buy a car. Okay, so we're going to just take a look at the recording he sent me with his answer and uh, and then and then I'll I'll give some some feedback, okay? So let's listen to his answer right now. Hi Mike, it is great to hear that you got your new license and you want to buy a car. I have few advice for you. It would be great if you buy a second hand car because it comes with a lesser price and the insurance cost is also very reasonable as compared to the new new brand new car which is very expensive considering your condition that you are a student and you have shortage of finance so it will really help you secondly you can reach out to the portals like craigslist portals which is very popular in canada and on those portals people are actually selling their own car so you don't have to deal with any sort of mediator and you can save some extra dollars on that too or i think you can also go to uh, auction sites or auction places where sometimes you might there are chances that you might hit a jackpot and you will get a wonderful product at a reasonable cost i would say and last and the most important thing is that do negotiate with the uh, with the owner at the end because from a personal experience i can say that i've saved around 200 dollars when i was negotiating at the final deal so i hope you will like my suggestion you can let me know how you feel about it okay great that's a great answer what do you think what score would you would you give him so he he said he got an eight in in the last exam okay so i think that was a great answer uh when i listened to him speak i you know it, it seems that he has a lot of experience speaking english so that's good you know he spoke with uh with a lot of energy confidence right when when you're speaking on the exam it's a bit uncomfortable you got that little microphone and other people are around you and you know, this is a bit intimidating, but but try to speak with try to speak with some energy in your voice, not too fast. Some loud people outside my window here. Okay, so so try to speak uh, try to speak sort of at a at a at a medium pace, kind of like how I'm speaking now, right? Not too fast, not too slow. Try to speak clearly. You know, try to have some energy, be positive, and show the self of people that that you're confident. You know, you're a confident English speaker. Okay, you remember in my one of my last videos I said you need to prove yourself to them that 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 you speak English and that you are a level 9, right? So try to go into the exam with the mindset that you're going to prove to them that you your English is awesome. Okay? Uh, now you'll remember in my in my last video I said I, I told you guys how to get 9, okay? what strategy you should you should use to get level 9 and remember we talked about idioms okay if you go on the selpip website the official selpip website you'll see the list of requirements uh you know, the stuff they want to see to give you an 8 or a 9 or a 10 11 so they want to see idioms now when you listen to this uh did you hear any idioms Maybe you heard one or, or two. I don't know. Okay, like for example, um, he said he said hit a hit a jackpot. Okay, now that's great. Remember, he said you know if you if you go to an auction somewhere, a car auction, and you know you might you might hit a jackpot. Okay, so that's a great uh, you know you know that's a great idiom. Now here are some more. I'm going to give you some more things he could say. He could have said differently uh, that I think would 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 boost him to a nine or a ten. Or maybe higher okay so he said I have I have some advice for you remember at the beginning he said I have some advice for you actually it would be better to say I'd like to give you my two cents okay that's an idiom in English two cents okay so you can say uh, you know I'd like to give you my two cents that means I'd like to give you my opinion you know on what you should do what kind of car you should buy okay so that's the first idiom uh, the next one is is remember he said he said you know because you're a student 
you know, you're, you have a shortage of finance. Okay, he said a shortage of finance. Actually, a better way to say that would be strapped for cash. Okay, that's, a, that's an idiom in English that means you have no money. Okay, or, or you have very little money. You know, for college students, that's perfect. A perfect idiom to use for college students. Okay, so you could say, hey, uh, you know, hey, Mike, you know, I, I know you're a college student these days and I know you're strapped for cash. That's why I would recommend, you know, buying a cheap, whatever else you want to say, okay? But, but that's a good way to say it, strapped for cash. Okay, that's exactly the kind of language you need to use to get level nine or probably higher, okay? So the next one, he, he used the word portal uh, to describe uh, websites like Kijiji and Craigslist that we have in Canada. Actually, that's, that's probably not the best word to use. I would say, I would describe it this way. I would say there are two popular websites in Canada called Craigslist and Kijiji where you can buy and sell secondhand things. Okay, so that's how I would say it. Okay, there are two popular websites. I would use that word instead of instead of portal. That's that's my advice. Okay, so next he said you don't have to deal with a mediator, right? So he's saying that the reason to buy a private to do a private uh, deal is so that you don't have to deal with a mediator. Actually, a better way to say that uh, would be you, you can tell the person, you can tell Mike, uh, you know, I would recommend doing it this way because then you can cut out the middleman, okay? Then you can cut out the middleman, okay? That, that person, you know, in, is called the middleman, right? If, if you want to buy a new car in Canada, you have to go to a car dealership and, you know, they're always going to add all kinds of fees and, you know, whatever. It's, it's not good, right? So you want to cut out the middleman, okay? Cut out the middleman. That's a, that's a good idiom that, that you could use in this case. Uh, let's see, yeah, and I already mentioned he said hit hit a jackpot, okay? Uh, so that's great. So I think he, he used one idiom, which is great, but actually if you go on the Selpip website, you'll see that they, they want to see some idioms. Some, okay? So some means maybe more than more than one, right? Maybe two or three. So in my little evaluation here, okay, I didn't fix, you know, maybe made some small mistakes, small grammar mistakes or that. That's okay. Look, you don't, your English doesn't have to be perfect, right? I thought his answer was great. And the way, the, the easiest way to go from the eight to the nine is just to add these idioms. Okay. And those people are some peop loud people outside. So let's just review the idioms that I, that I would suggest. Okay. The first one was, remember, uh, I'd like to give you my two cents. Okay. That's an idiom. I'd like to give you my two cents. Instead of shortage of finance, you can say strapped for cash, strapped for cash. Uh, and then uh, another one is uh, instead of instead of a, the mediator, uh, you can say you can say cut out the middleman. Okay, so right there, those are three three figures of speech, right? A figure of speech is like an idiom or a phrasal verb or something. You know that sort of uh, that that has a sort of a special meaning, right? Like if you're sick, you can say I'm under the weather. I'm under the weather. That's an idiom <laughs> that means you're sick. So use idioms like this next time and, and you will definitely get a nine or a 10. Hey, hope that helps you guys. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Stay safe, stay happy, and uh, I'll try to make some more Selpip uh, videos for you guys soon. So like I said, have a great day and I'll see you guys over in the next episode of Mad English TV. <laughs> Take care.